Six Figured AP Latin, welcome. Everything that you know and your experience in Latin that you have had so far in Latin 1 and 2 is all completely different than what you are going to experience now. AP Latin in many ways is one of the tallest mountains to climb that you can have as far as classes are concerned at Eastside High School. Gone are the days of the structure and the way that I go about things in Latin 1, going over individual items of grammar, having all those sorts of things that come along with it of learning the language. What you do in AP Latin now is going to be read authentic, unaltered Latin from two particular Roman authors and do the best that you can in order to be able to retain the vocabulary, retain the structures, to when presented, when the text that you have already read, both with me and or reviewed on your own, with the videos that I make, and a website that I have now granted or have made available for your access, that when presented with those lines that we have read before, that you yourself will know what they say in great detail and in a literal sense. So the AP Latin syllabus, or the AP Latin class that we have experienced now, has been in existence since 2013. Previous to 2013, and a little bit before, there were actually two AP Latin classes. There was one called AP Virgil, and there was one called AP Latin Literature. In AP Virgil, obviously, you read Virgil, the end-all, be-all of all Roman authors. In AP Latin Literature, you read Catullus, and then each individual teacher had a choice between three other authors to select one to be paired with Catullus that you would then read. All of that was blown up around ten years ago by the College Board, and instead took a couple of years to develop the new course that we see now. Now, in AP Latin, essentially what you have to do is that you are going to read selections from Virgil's Aeneid, and the selections that we'll read from the Aeneid, which of course, as in and of itself, is 12 books long, we will read selections from book 1, book 2, book 4, and book 6. That is what this class is. It is a literature class. We are reading the literature, trying the best that we can, and discussing its significance, what it means, analyzing the text, and all that sort of stuff that comes along with it. The second author that, of course, is a part of AP Latin as a whole that we read from is going to be, of course, Gaius Julius Caesar, Caesar's De Bello Gallico, or the Commentarii De Bello Gallico, or the DBG. And from the DBG, which, of course, is seven books long, we will read excerpts from books one, books four, books five, and book six. Now, the two aspects of the course is one, what we, of course, read in class on a daily basis, and then there is the exam in and of itself. And I will talk about the exam and all that comes along with it in just a moment. But first, let me be blunt with you. This will be unequivocally the most difficult class you have ever had to this point in high school. I don't want to sugarcoat it, and I tell people the same thing. It is a baton death march throughout the year. It requires dedication. It requires effort. It requires long nights, sometimes losing sleep. Ask anybody who has ever successfully made their way through the course and they will tell you it is work. Now, much like in Latin 1 and 2, the work is not necessarily conceptual, as in trying to become a theoretical physicist or a neurosurgeon. It is still digging a ditch. It is still memorizing vocabulary. But now the ditch that you are digging is the Grand Canyon. In Latin 1 and 2, you were digging normal ditches in which you would lay, you know, electrical wire or things like that. You are going to have to dig the Grand Canyon with a shovel. It is not something that is insurmountable. It is not something that you cannot do. But I am telling you, you have to know what is in front of you. It is a slog and a thing that you have to do 
every single day. And if you slack, if you don't do it every single day, then the mountain that you have to climb becomes higher and higher and higher, and it seems insurmountable. There has not been a single year in which I have taught AP Latin in which there has not been tears. You people who are so used to making good grades at all time will perhaps make a 30 on an exam. You will make a 20 on an exam. I don't want you to, but inevitably people will make single digits on exams, and it will be for no other reason than they did not realize the amount of time and the amount of effort and the amount of dedication that goes into being successful. But I will tell you this, if you do put in that time, if you do put in that effort, if you do what I ask of you, which is not unreasonable, there have been scores and scores of people to come along through AP Latin before you, you will be successful. All you have to do is look at the historical success and the historical scores that have been made on AP exams, and you will see. Now, I will say this. There has been an unwelcome and unwanted trend in the last five to six years, four to five years more so, in which there are lots of students who have not necessarily put forth the times and the effort, and their scores have reflected that. So I'm telling you now, it is nothing beyond any of your capabilities, but you cannot treat AP Latin like the red-headed stepchild of your schedule. Now, a lot of the part of reason why people have done it is because, unfortunately, I have put trust in my students that you will do what you are supposed to without the unnecessary draconian measures sometimes that are enacted upon you. So often we do things as students because we are afraid of the consequences. And so when I lift necessarily the immediate consequences of, well, you didn't do well on this quiz, just take it again. Oh, you didn't do well on this exam, you'll be able to retake it. But students fall into the false security of, oh, I can retake it, and they never end up learning it for the retake. That is the danger. That is why I stress to the point that you must, must, must Keep up and not fall behind. It is, like I said, a slog. I fully admit it. I am fully aware. It is like cutting your way through a dense rainforest jungle. And the whole time, and unfortunately because of your limited experience of only Latin 1 and 2, and then all of a sudden being presented with the greatest work of Latin literature in Virgil's Aeneid, which even for a, a native Roman, a native Latin speaker would be difficult. It would be kind of like taking someone who has never known English, they learn English for only two years in a classroom setting, handing them Shakespeare and say, read it. You are not going to be able to do it. I fully admit that. You will not, on your own, be able to handle in the Aeneid. And it's kind of a sad thing because in many ways it is one of, if not the greatest work of literature that we have in all of Western society. And in front of you is placed this beautiful, beautiful work that encapsulates in a, a, a beautiful expression an entirety of a civilization. And yet the whole time you have an inability to even appreciate it because in the same way that you are in that tropical rainforest jungle, in all the beauty that is there, you are dying because you are being attacked by insects, you are being attacked by animals that are hunting you down. You are being attacked by the plant life in and of itself, the briars, the thorns, and all of it. And you are dying, and that is what AP Latin is like. But the way that you can survive it, the way that you can prevail, the way that you can end up, if you so choose to make a four or a five on the exam, like so many students have before, is that you have a guide. And I am that guide for you to where I understand the travails, I can see the beauty of the jungle, and with my trusty machete, I hack the path for you, but you still will struggle. It is something that is a necessity, but understand that you are benefiting from said struggle. So I will go ahead and be upfront and honest, and if you want to seek out a way 
by which you are now terrified and wish to leave and flee from this class, I will not hold it against you, but I'm telling you now. What I am requiring of you, even in this most unusual time, is a willingness, a willingness, a willingness to put in the time and the effort more than any other. Now, a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the thing. So, what will happen is that in class, we will read the lines together. Now, it is going to be much more difficult than if you were here in person, because just like we read the passages of Eke Romani, we read them all together. And the same thing for the, of course, Aeneid, but we cannot do it in a group setting over Zoom, because you cannot have everybody chiming in at the same time. We're going to try it, but it is going to be trial and error as to how we make our way through these lines. But essentially, we just try to read the lines to the best we can. Now, again, it's going to be difficult. The mountain that you will have to climb is a vocab mountain. And the retention of this vocab is absolutely essential. If I were to give you right now, at the very beginning, a major exam over the vocab that you have learned in Latin 1 and 2, how many of the words would you know? How many of the words would you have retained? And yet now you are going to be presented with old words that we should know, and I'll always point them out very often. I'll point out the very chapter in which we had learned this word, and yet you still will not remember. But you have to retain both the words that we have encountered and the new words, which will be numerous on a daily basis. It's going to be the equivalency of reading a new Eke Romani chapter every single day, and you have to retain the vocabulary and the grammatical structures that come along with it. Now, the way in which you will be assessed is once we have read a certain amount of lines from the Aeneid or a certain amount of lines from the DBG, we will have quizzes. Now, since 2013, my way of going about things when we are in the current schedule that we have now, no longer a block schedule, we've been in this current schedule since, oh, I don't know, uh, 2012 or so, but uh, having six classes instead of four, although now, of course, this year everything is, is vastly different. Once we have read an X amount of lines, I give you a quiz to take on your own. And just like with the passages of Ekerumani, usually these quizzes consist of two parts. One is multiple choice over the comprehension of the various different items within the passage. And then two, instead of vocab, a little section of those lines that you will have to translate. Now, of course, back in the days in which we were in person, and especially now when we are obviously remote until hopefully we'll be able to come together again, there is an incredible amount of trust that I am putting in you to be honest. On these quizzes, when you take them home, the great advantage is that you can prepare on your own time and then take the quiz when you feel that you are prepared to take it. But once you begin taking the quiz, you must be honest and no longer consult the Latin notes, the recordings, all of the other things that come along that give to you your help and ability to comprehend the line. You are on your own, and I beg of you to be honest. And we will have these quizzes at various points throughout the semester. And I again warn you, be honest on the quizzes, because I will know when the day of reckoning comes. And the day of reckoning is the only other part of usual assessments that I give, and that would be exams. Exams are in class, and if it has to be in class virtually or remotely, it will be that. And on the exam, it is just you and four or five passages from all of the lines that we have read, and it is either you know what the lines say, you remember what the words are, or you don't. And I am telling you now, if you wait until a day or two before the exam, for example, the first exam that I give to you is the Aeneid, Book 1, lines 1 through 209, 209 lines of dactylic hexameter that you need to study to make sure you know the vocabulary, that you know the forms, that you know what is the subject, that you know what the tense of the verb is. And these are lines that we will have read together. But when you think that 
you can prepare for an exam of 209 lines only a day or two before it, you will come to quickly realize this is a mountain that you will not be able to climb. And that is why very often I will get scores on the exams that are unacceptable at times single digits, but you must come to the conclusion and realize that you cannot operate in that way. But on the exams, it is a clear, clear indication. And that is why I put so much more stock and credibility into the exams than what I do with the quizzes. The quizzes are merely nothing but an incentive, a reminder, a exercise to force you to review the lines on a regular basis intervals before the reckoning of the exams. Now, let me then talk a little bit about the AP Latin exam itself. You have, obviously, multiple choice on the exam, which counts for 50% of your score, and then you have the free response, which counts for 50% of your score. On the multiple choice, what they will do is they will present to you four passages. And those four passages will then total a grand total of 50 multiple choice questions. Just like you've been taking multiple choice on the passages that I have in Romani, just like on the National Latin exam, the very last section, they give you a passage, multiple choice questions about it. One of the passages will be lines from Virgil that we will have read together in class. You should know these lines and what they say. We will have talked about them. We will have discussed them. You will have been quizzed over them. You will have been examined over them. The second one is going to be a passage of Caesar in the same exact way. Then passage three and four are going to be sight passages. That is a passage that you had never seen before in Latin in your life. One of prose and then a sight passage of poetry. And from those 50 questions, you earn 50% of your score. Then we come to the free response. Free response consists of following. One translation of the lines of Virgil that we have read. One translation of the lines that Caesar we have read. One essay that you will write in which you are presented lines from Virgil and or Caesar. It could be a couple of passages, one from each, and you have to write about what's going on in those passages in English, but to be able to write the essay, you gotta know what the lines say. To be able to translate, you gotta know what the lines say. You gotta know what the lines say. Then you're gonna have one passage in which you're going to then have short answer questions of Virgil, and then you're gonna have one passage of short answer questions of Caesar. So when it comes to the free response, there is nothing that is going to be on there that we will not have read in class. And I have a schedule that I'm going to talk about it at length further, and it's different than in the past. In the past, obviously, the schedule, because all bets are off now, and I can show you the schedule from last year that I go through, and here you can see I start out in August, and these are the lines we read on a particular day, and then September, October, all that, of course, is out the window, simply because we are now starting in September for the first time. Our great advantage of having an extra month in preparation for the AP exam is out the window, but I have obviously understood and thought about these things and am putting forth a schedule and a plan by which you will still have opportunity to be successful without great and unnecessary hardships due to the fact that the school year is like what it is now. Now, the free response should be where you excel. Now, I will be honest, throughout the year I am not going to worry about essay until like April. Why? Because it has been my experience that you can write an essay if you know what the Latin says. That is the key to everything. You have got to review the lines. You have got to review the vocabulary every single day. That is the key. You'll be able to answer short answers if you know what the Latin says. Knowing what the Latin says is more important than everything else combined. That's why my quizzes, multiple choice,
Translation. That's why my exams? Translation. Knowing what the Latin says, it's a slog. It is hard. It is overwhelming at times. I am the first to admit it. I will do everything I can to help you. And you are not the first people to sit in an AP Latin class and to hear this on the first day. You are not. There have been dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of students who have come before you, who have put in the time, who have put in the effort, who have put in the time, who have put in the time, who have put in the time, who have put in the work, and they have been successful, and you can too. And they were not successful at the detriment of their other classes. You can work it within. You are not the first, and you are not alone. I'm here to help you, but you're going to have to work, and I expect no less. So, we'll be reading works or selections from Virgil's Aeneid, and we'll be reading selections from Caesar's De Bello Gallico. Welcome to AP Latin. It is going to be a hard, long march, but we will make it together, and I will make sure that I am pushing you all along the way as much as I can. Thank you. I'd like to point something out about the recent trend. I tell my students, if you do what I ask you to do, and you perform well in the class, you will get a 4 or a 5. Now, it used to be a little bit easier to get a 5 than what it is now, but you do what I tell you to do, all year long you will get a 4 or a 5. Put in the effort and you will get a 4 or a 5. And the numbers bore it out. Over an 11 year period from 2005 to 2015, or 2015. And please note, that is post the changing of the syllabus. So 2013, 2014, and 2015 are included in these numbers. And I would put the performance of my students in those years on the AP exam against any other Latin program in the country. They made 65 5, 41 4s, 14 3s. There was 1 2 and 1 1 in an 11 year period. If you then look at the trend of the last five years, things are markedly different. Now I can live with that. Like I said, it is slightly more difficult to make a 5 now than what it used to be. But in the last 5 years you were looking at 6 5s, 19 4s, 16 3s, 5 2s, and 3 1s. You can do better than this. We must reverse this trend. In that some of these threes can and should be fours. These twos can and should be threes. And you should not make a one. Nevertheless, even with the downward trend, which we must reverse, you can see that historically, on the AP exam, a grand total of 171 scores in my career. Of that 171, 161 scored a 3 or above. That is what you need to expect of yourself, but it only will happen if you put in the time. 71 5s, 64s, 33s, and up from two only six years ago to now ten twos and ones. It is not impossible, but these trends must come to an end such that, once again, give yourself opportunity. There are scores upon scores upon scores of students, well over a hundred, who have taken their good score of a four or five, gone off to college, and regardless of whatever they're majoring in, picking up a Latin degree along the way. Just 
This morning, September 4th, 2020, I get an email from a 2019 grad to let me know that she has decided to pick up a Claxis minor. So many former students use this as a launching pad to be able to pick up some sort of extra minor, extra major, simply because they, one, have been exposed to it in high school and their experience in college is going to be not as challenging as what it could be. But more importantly, it puts you ahead as an addition to whatever you are majoring in. I would argue the vast majority of the students who have majored and minored in classics that came from my classes, they didn't become anything revolving classics or teach of themselves. They became doctors. They became lawyers. All of those sorts of things. Just two days ago, I got an email from a student in his final year of law school. And as he has been interviewing for various law firms in the next year to become a full-time lawyer, the number one thing he says that every single one of them asks about when he lists interests, interests Roman history. He was a classical culture major along with history, goes off to law school, but these are the sorts of things. Just within the last three days, a person who has just now completed medical school used their Latin degree that they received in classics as an undergrad in college as the springboard to be successful in medical school. And so it can help you if you put in the time and the effort now and we have got to reverse the recent trend of the last six years. I say this every single year of the last five or six but nevertheless, we can and must do better. These numbers are astronomical. These numbers are good, but we need to be better than good. And you can do it with time, you can do it with effort, you can do it with willpower. And I'm here to help you along the way.